Hi, my name's Andy from Race Technology, uh, and in today's video, I wanted to introduce um, some of the enhancements we've added to version 10 of, the, uh, of our software package um, with regards to the enhancements to the GoPro support. So for some years now, we've, uh, we've supported GoPro within our software, so you could load in GoPro video alongside our data. But with version 10, we've really, uh, we've really improved the usability, the flexibility, and the speed of that support. And um, since we're just in the process of releasing version 10, I just wanted to uh, introduce some of the enhancements that uh, we put in there. So I should explain first of all, um, there's actually two ways that we support GoPro, so two different installation methods. The first one is we have a completely standalone GoPro uh, mode. So in that mode you take the file from the GoPro, um, which contains both the video and the data, so that's the GPS data and the accelerometer which are built into the camera, and you can load those directly into our software. So that's a special mode, uh, and in that mode our software strips out the data from that video file, it converts it and displays it, and it also takes the video and displays that. So that's GoPro standalone mode, and in that mode, well, obviously, you're not using any race technology hardware. You're just using a GoPro camera and our software. So that, that mode is actually covered in a separate video, which hopefully there's a link in the, uh, in the description below. Uh, and if you're interested in using just your GoPro camera with our software, that's the video to watch. So uh, in this video, I'm explaining the more normal use of our system. So you have either a DL1 or a Dash 2 Pro, some method to log um, log data on a race technology product, or I should say the RT Live as well, so there's a few options. So you're logging race technology data on one of our products, but you also have a GoPro camera and you'd like to view your data from our data logger alongside the GoPro video. So that's, uh, that's the, the normal way to do things. And, that, that, and that's what we used to support, I say, in version 8.5, but in version 10 it's been enhanced a lot. So there's um, three, broadly, three areas we've, we've, we've enhanced with regards to GoPro support in version 10. Um, number one is we've introduced a package to allow you to join your um, GoPro files, well, your GoPro video chapters into a single video. So a common problem that was reported by users was they like using their GoPro footage, but the GoPro doesn't record for very long into a single file, and you could only load a single file at a time into our software. So if you went out for an hour session, for example, you might come back with three or even four um, GoPro chapters, so you couldn't look at your whole race in one go. So to address that, we've introduced a video joining package, um, I'll show you that now actually, so if you look at the screen, so you go to all applications, um, start the video joiner software, uh, and very simply, so we go to the video that we want to join, we can select it, so in this case it's five chapters, and we click go, and that's all there is to it, so that is joining those multiple chapters into a single video, and as you can see, this is not a particularly fast computer, I should say, this is, um, I think this is an i3, um, it was a few hundred pounds worth of computer anyway, it's nothing special, and it's only taking a few seconds to join those video files together. So it's very fast, very straightforward to use, uh, and very handy if you do have multiple chapters you want to join together. So that's, um, that's, the, first <coughs> excuse me, that's the first enhancement. <coughs> the, the two biggest improvements, probably, are actually built into the analysis software. Um, the first one is we've completely automated the synchronization procedure. So in version 8.5, there was a few different ways you could synchronize your data from our product with the video from the GoPro camera. Um, firstly, um, for some GoPro cameras, there was a cable available, so you could control the camera from the data logger. Uh, and that used to work well, but unfortunately GoPro changed their firmware and changed their connector type and some other problems. So that, that cable was only ever usable with a few particular GoPro models, and those GoPro models aren't available anymore. So that wasn't that widely used. Um, secondly, we allowed the user to synchronise based on the time and date set on the camera and the time and date from the DL1. Um, that was used by some users very successfully. The problem was if the time and date wasn't set accurately on the GoPro camera, then it was all very confusing. Um, so general user feedback was, well, it's okay, but it's a little bit flaky, let's say. So in actual fact, talking to a lot of customers in our own uh, experience in the office, by far the most common option for 8.5 was to load in the data, load in the video from GoPro, and synchronize them manually. So you select a point in the data and the video, which is common, so a gear change or when you're putting out the pits, and then you just manually synchronize them together. It's perfectly doable. We used to do it in the, in the office all the time. And the first time you did it, it was a bit fiddly. It would take a few minutes. But once you've done it a few times, well, um, you get pretty quick. But it wasn't a great experience, and sometimes you could get it wrong. So um, in V10, the big difference is that uh, that synchronization process is now fully automatic. And the way we do it is we get the time and date from our GPS data from, our data, um, from the data logger. We get the GPS time and date from the camera, because the integrated GPS receiver. And then we match those up. 
and that means it's completely seamless, fully automatic, there's really no user interaction at all. You simply load the data, load the video, they're synchronized, that's it. Um, the other big enhancement in version 10 is we've changed the video library um, that we use to support GoPro. So we used a, an older library in 8.5, worked perfectly well, but it used old video graphics card standards and it was start, it started to age. It, it simply it wasn't using all the new features of a modern computer. So in version 10 we've updated that to a, a brand new video library and it is much, much faster. So for a, a typical PC it's about 10 times the speed. So in terms of how quickly it responds to clicks in the software and the exporting. Exporting for full HD used to be running about 5 frames per second, it's now running about 50 frames per second for the same computer. So it's a massive difference, much more usable. Okay, so that's uh, enough talking, I'll go back to the computer now. So I'm going to start up the analysis software, which is obviously the main package, which allows you to um, look at synchronized video, um, data and video. So I'll click here. Uh, I'll start with a blank session just to show how things work. So this is the main package. So I'm now going to load up some data. Click there. And I'm actually loading the data from a, um, a folder on my desktop. So I could be loading from a, an SD card at this point. It really makes no difference. So select that run there. Click open. It's now loading that data file and scaling it and filtering it and generating the track map and so on. Okay, so the data's loaded, and it's now prompting me, would I like to load a GoPro video? So, yes, I would. I'll select it from my desktop. Again, I'm selecting it from the desktop in this case, um, but equally, I, uh, I could be loading it from SD card. And in this case, I'm going to load the LRV, which is the uh, LRV I just joined. So I'll say, open. Okay, so at this point, the software has noticed that we've, both, we've got both the MP4 and the LRV. Um, and just to explain, so in most modes, GoPro records two video files simultaneously. It records an MP4 file, which is very large, very high quality, so that's the video file that's at 1080p or 2K or 4K, uh, depending on the settings. But it also records an LRV file. Now, the LRV file is about a tenth of the size. It's still DVD quality. It's very, very good quality, um, but obviously it's not, a, you know, it's not the full 4K uh, video file. Um, but it's much, much quicker to handle and copy from computer to computer. So they're very handy. We use them a lot for, um, for anal video analysis in the office. So it's giving us the choice. Now, in this case, I'm going to load up the LRV. It's giving us a preview, saying, is this the correct one? Yeah, that's the right one. And now the software has looked at the GPS timestamps from our data file and from the GoPro file, it's noticed they match up and it's just confirming they've matched up. So that's the synchronization done. So as you can see, there was no user interaction. It's all done for you, it's completely seamless, takes a few seconds, really no overhead to that at all. So we'll just uh, have a look at the data now. So this is the, uh, the track map. We'll put the Google overlay on it. And just zoom in. Um, let's add a track marker so if we go here we can automatically add a track marker in that case the our software is searching its database of predefined ones and it's found one there um, and now it's offering to add sectors so yeah let's go ahead and sectors so I'll put that there um, next thing I'll open the lap and sectors window so there's quite a few laps in this data let's take a look we've got we've got 19 laps of data actually um, next thing normally we have a uh, we look at quick graphs, so we just pick a couple of laps, and normally, um, in terms of data analysis, we're looking at the fastest lap and another lap, so we just pick the one before, which was about a second slower. And then finally, um, we look at the, um, the video. So let's pop that one up there. I should say, you don't have to do this layout every time. Once you're happy with the layout, then of course you can save it, and it just loads up automatically. Um, and now we can click on any point on this graph, and we can see the video. So we come into the corner there. Maximum braking force there, getting past the apex, accelerating, and so on. So you can see, well, I, I'm not sure how well the video capture software works, but in, in terms of me clicking on this graph and updates on the screen, I, there, there's no perceivable delay at all. So that's um, that's for two video streams. If we want to, we can. Oh, that, uh, it's quite slow that one. So we can click on up to five. You can see that they're getting pretty small at this stage. Let's just move some windows around, just to make them a little bit bigger. So still very, very fast, very little delay on it. Um, it's very rare that you'd ever really want five, so let's, uh, let's go back to two. And again, we can, uh, we can click on those. So that's in terms of looking at graphs. 
Uh, we've also got the real-time playback, which is not used so much, but um, just to demonstrate the video capabilities. So if we start start from the uh, just before the apex of that corner, just to study the two lines, maybe. So we click on play here. And this gentleman's driving a very repeatable lines in those two cases, so there's not really much to comment on those. Uh, carry a bit more speed around there. Um, and the, the red one here is a slightly higher peak speed onto the brakes. So yes, so um, in terms of analysis, we can scan through the, um, the data. We can look at the track map. So you can zoom into different sectors, for example. So you can pick a couple of sectors. We want to, and again, you can see how nicely they're synchronised from the um, the position of the bridge just as it goes past the window there. Um, the video quality, I say this is an LRV file, but it's very, very nice video quality. Um, and you have all, all the um, all the data and video. And as I pointed out, it's com it's very fast, very easy to use. So this isn't a particularly fast computer. This is easily handled on on any decent laptop. Um, um, in addition, so if we say, well, okay, I like our let's pick our fastest lap. We also have video export facilities, so we can go to File, uh, Export as a Video. We can select an overlay, so let's, um, there's lots of factory defined overlays, so if we go to the factory area, and let's export it as a uh, XO1080p. So it's just downloading that from our cloud server. And we simply click, oh, to, sorry, I've got to specify an output directory, so let's, let's put it on the desktop. Generate that, so you can see, well, I guess it's not a particularly fast computer, this one, but it's still generating at 30, uh, 30 frames per second, um, and we can obviously minimise that while it's doing it. I'll cancel that. The video export system, it's as it always was, so you can still design your own layouts, and you can add on... Uh, extra parameters. So, on obviously, the, if you're just after speed, then you could just be using the um, the standard GoPro um, uh, data overlay package, which works very nicely actually. Um, but if you want additional data, then you can use R. So, for example, you might add some ECU parameters, lap times, sector times, time slip rates. That's how much faster or slower than you're going compared with another lap. Or you can even uh, overlay simulated time slips. That's how much faster or slower you're going compared with the theoretical fastest that that uh, that lap could be driven. Okay, so I'll close that. Um, okay, so uh, in summary, um, version 10 GoPro support's been enhanced a lot compared with um, version 8.5. We've now got facility to join videos, so you can uh, take multiple GoPro chapters and join them into one complete video, which is very, uh, very convenient way to, uh, to manage a video. Um, the actual video support in terms of video handling is using a brand new library. It's about 10 times faster than it was before. So in terms of doing video and data analysis at the track side, it's very fast, very snappy, and very usable. And finally, and probably most importantly, if you're using one of the later GoPro cameras that includes integrated GPS, then synchronization is completely automatic. You load your data, you load your video, it's done. There's, there's, there's nothing else to be concerned about with regards to synchronization. So that works very nicely. Okay, so that's a very quick introduction. Um, hopefully you got the idea of some of the work we've been putting into version 10. If you already have a video license, then this upgrade is completely free. Um, if you uh, are interested in buying a video license, then of course get in contact with us, and we'd be delighted. Okay, thanks very much, and uh, I hope that was of some interest. Thank you.